Check out today's headlines. CNN, Afghan government falls. The New York Times, Afghanistan's government collapses. The Washington Post, Afghan government collapses as Taliban takes control of Kabul. Fox News, Afghan President Ghani flees. U.S. Embassy lowers American flag with Taliban takeover nearly complete. The Los Angeles Times, Taliban floods Kabul, President flees, and Afghan government collapses. U.S. rapidly evacuates. The BBC, Taliban enter Kabul as Afghan government collapses. Reuters, Taliban enter Afghan capital, President and diplomats flee. MSNBC, Taliban takes control of presidential palace as Pentagon to send 1,000 troops to Kabul. Those additional 1,000 troops, of course, will only be there to help with the evacuation. Just three days ago, I was reading articles from experts who were saying that Kabul would probably fall to the Taliban within a few months, but that it could happen in as little as one month. Three days later, Afghan government falls. What the experts weren't factoring into their time frames was that the Afghan government had concluded that fighting was pointless. The Afghan government agreed with the Borg, resistance is futile. Why fight the Taliban for a month or for three months when they're going to conquer you anyway? Why not flee and surrender whatever is left and hope that the Taliban appreciates the gesture? That's what Afghan leaders concluded, so they left. And now, the people they once led are under the control of that tiny minority of extremists who fought the Soviet Union for nine years and won, back when they were called the Afghan Mujahideen, who were supported by the U.S., and who fought the United States of America for two decades and won. When I say they won, I don't mean that they defeated the two most powerful nations in history on the battlefield. They won by wearing down the will of the countries they fought against. They won by being patient and relentless. There's an interesting clip from a recent CNN video. The Taliban are offering reporters protection to come and interview their leaders because they want to spread their message. Listen to this guy. It's our belief that one day Mujahideen will have victory and Islamic law will come not to just Afghanistan, but all over the world. We are not in a hurry. We believe it will come one day. Jihad will not end until the last day. Jihad will not end until the last day. Islamic law will take over the world, but we are not in a hurry. What was the Soviet Union doing in Afghanistan? Trying to destroy resistance to the Communist Party? The response of the Afghan Mujahideen was, how important is that to you, Soviet Union? Because we can hide in caves and attack you forever, and we are not in a hurry. The Soviet Union lasted nine years against the Afghan Mujahideen. Why was the U.S. in Afghanistan for two decades? To keep the Taliban from harboring terrorists? All the Taliban had to do was say, how important is this Operation Enduring Freedom to you, Americans? Because we can hide in caves and attack you forever, and we are not in a hurry. Do you really want American soldiers dying in our country forever? How many trillions of dollars do you want to spend? Who wants to fight a war that never ends? Then all they had to do was wait, because they were not in a hurry. But notice the Taliban official said that this is their approach to conquering the entire world. Endless jihad until everyone just gets sick of fighting and submits to Islamic law. That's been Islam's approach for 14 centuries. Brutal violence combined with patience and relentlessness can wear down some very strong wills over time. When Islam comes for your nation, you better hope that you have leaders and a population with a collective will that is absolutely indomitable. Because the jihadis are not in a hurry.
telling you, this is a power of religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah?